Dave Chappelle, the comedian. And uh, when he got offered this big sum of money, and uh, he turned it down and, and, and fled to Africa. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, what happened is this. David Chappelle had one of the brilliant minds. See, there's no money in comedy. The money is in writing, okay? Uh, Ed Weinberger, who started off writing for me, and 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 he developed into one of the fine writers. He's the one. If you look at the Bill Cosby show, you see it created by Ed Weinberger. If Bill Cosby's made a billion dollars, which he have, Ed Weinberger have made ten billion. The money is in writing, and so David Chappelle went to school in Washington D.C. He went to the Duke Ellington School of the Fine Arts, and a white dude, they grew up together. They developed all kinds of good projects and stuff. And that's when he hit, him and this white dude was the writers. Well, network, TV network don't tolerate that. But he was so good, they had to figure a way around it. But they had to let him do because the money they was making on him and the, the whole, I mean, he was getting hate mail, but that's America. But all at once now, he signed a $50 million contract. That $50 million contract, most of that was for writing. What he didn't know in that contract that he had signed to bring on about 20 other writers. And what hurt him so bad is this white dude that they'd been friends. He carried him all the way down the road, had switched over, and that hurt him bad. When I talked to him, uh, I, uh, it was a New York Times uh, reporter interviewing me, and I had never met him. And I said, well, he said he's going to South Africa to talk to him. I said, well, would you give him my number and tell him to call me? And then he called me, and then we become very, very good friends, you know, talking friends. And, and, and the hurt, most folk don't know that story that I just said, but that's what that was about. It, it, you see, when you hit white supremacy, Bill Cosby, see, see, most folks don't understand white supremacy. White supremacy is not Ku Klux Klan or white citizen kind. White supremacy is the high. I remember I used to hear my mother say the problem is these old redneck, Negro-hating white folks can't read or write. And one day I pulled my brother to the side and I said, do you believe she believes, she really believes that that type of white boy determines public policy. Now, I didn't know it at that time. Like, I know that my problem is the president of General Motors and, 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 and AT&T and Boeing Aircraft and Harvard and Yale. That's the problem. Those are the ones that determine public policy. And so, consequently, when you stop and think about that Bill Cosby didn't understand white supremacy, because Bill Cosby said, I want to buy General NBC and NBC was for sale. And he had the credentials and the money and the, the, the credit worthiness to get it. Right. And that's all at once he said, what? And then all at once his son come up. Now let's look at his son's death. Mm. His son was driving on the highway in California, okay? He has a flat tire, okay? He comes off and they say he get robbed, man. In the old stage call today, you could stand out there, Wells Fargo, with the horses and rob them. Who in their right mind going to be on the highway to rob somebody in a car? So all at once, that car got a flat tire, and it came off the highway. And he called this white woman that showed up to help him change the flat. She had on a mink coat, a mini skirt, and high heel shoes. So that sounded like... Now, what Bill Cosby knows that few people know is that that was one of the upscales Mercedes, and if you had a flat, you just pushed the button, and it changed its own tire, okay? Mm. Now, they told us that it wasn't robbery. Hello. He had $6,000 cash. Uh, they said um, he had his credit cards and his cell phone. Nine months later, they arrest a Russian immigrant, and said he did it. And then when we check it out, we find out that Russian immigrant was in Mexico City that night. I'm just telling you how it works. 
and how they do things and how they you I dare you you better you better behave yourself. For instance, uh, you, you you read where the, the the city council a bunch of them had to step down, a couple of them for some criminal activity. Mm-hmm. Well, in today's Washington Post, they called uh, uh, Councilman Brown arrogant. Well, wait a minute, man. <laughs> Madoff stole fifty billion dollars. They ain't never called him arrogant. They, they they just wiped out. They say two billion dollars. They wiped out about. Twelve billion dollars with J.P. Morgan Chase, and ain't nobody been arrested. Nobody been investigated. And they, if you read all you find, they said a mistake. They, they don't call it theft. They don't know where it is. How do you <laughs> take that money? You know. And so that's the way the white supremacy. That's why in America, a Negro can never be a racist. And why? Because. I can dislike you because you're Irish Catholic. I can dislike you because you're Polish. I can dislike you because you're Jewish. That's prejudice. Prejudice is prejudging. Mm -hmm. Racism is the ability to control somebody else's faith and destiny. And I don't care how bad one might hate white folks. We do not have the power to see to it their children go to a bad school. We do not have the power to see to it that they get brutalized by the police. We don't have the policy to it. They can live in bad neighborhoods, run down neighborhoods, and nothing they can do about it. And so when you look at racism, the ability to control somebody else's faith and destiny, and then you start seeing a whole different thing. But there's some very interesting stuff that's coming out lately about, you know, the, uh, the American have their they income have dropped 40%. Now think about this. This didn't happen under the president. This has been going on for the last... Ten years, forty. But that's what you're looking at, and that's where Roosevelt was brilliant during that first Great Depression when he said, "There's nothing to fear but fear itself." Mm-hmm. If you go back and hear about Hitler and them Nazis, that he didn't just come to power; he lost election after election, and the economy got bad. And I used to always hear how to get a loaf of bread in Germany. You had to take the money to the store in a wheelbarrow. That's how little the money was worth. And then when you you had that white mentality, there's a lot of things you can't, oh, you just can't figure out. We're supposed to be. So then you can blame it on. So they blamed it on the Jews. They blamed it on the Jews. This is my problem. And they get away. They didn't blame it on bad management. They didn't blame it on the politicians. So we, we're going through the same thing now. Yeah, but there's one difference. The only reason we can't produce a Hitler, we can't produce an honest demigod. <laughs> they did. Well, first, why would my grandmother and grandfather or my mother, why would they hear anything about Kim Choice when they only hear it? They don't even hear them talk about it on NBC or CBS. You don't hear the government talking about it. So you just look up in the sky and you see all them clouds up there. But before I get in that, let me just read this to you. And those of you all who want to do the research, uh, Roger Masters. He's of Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. And here's what he says. And this never ran American paper. Crime linked to pollution. Oh, polluted water can cause brain damage that turns ordinary people into violent criminals. Researcher Roger Matt, well, wait a minute now. If this water is so bad, and they keep talking about how the poor folks is failing in this country. Uh, I, I don't have no idea. I might could trace this back to water, to, 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 to polluted water. So consequently, here's scientific data. Polluted water can cause brain damage that turns ordinary people into violent criminals. And then he goes on and he says, uh, New Hampshire, he compared crime figures from the FBI with information on industrial discharge of lead and manganese. Now, lead will run you crazy. Manganese together, you got a piece. So now, listen to me now. Information of industrial discharge of lead and manganese. He found a link between pollution levels and murder, assault and robbery, counties with the highest Pollution level have a crime rate triple the nation's average. Now, 
chemtrails. They mix that stuff together. I looked into one of the planes once. I, I was privileged. To, 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 and he said, they, they, you see these huge, look like oil tanks, uh, oil drums up there, and the tubes coming out, and they mixing the stuff, and they're putting it in, and then they, they, they put it out, and then they have another system where they can name aim it anywhere they want to name it. So at nighttime while we sleep, it's a malt liquor. When you, you, you this week, uh, go into a white neighborhood and see if you can buy malt liquor. Why? You can't buy it because it has a thing in it called manganese. And, and once you get enough manganese, you'll kill mom. And so, this is, and so when you look at everybody's talking about uh, shootings in Chicago, 30 people dead, and blah, 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 and it never dawned on us. <laughs> but this is the same thing. The Jews did the same thing. <laughs> Do you realize when the Jews was in them camps, man, there was Germans, Germans that would sneak and tell them what they was planning on doing, and they just couldn't believe it. And they would turn the Germans in. The Germans would be killed. And so we look at the same mentality here. We really believe that this crime rate we're looking at is, is, is black. We really believe that all of this violence we see is black folk.